Hey guys, Introspection here. Today I'm going to give you the third video in my video series on helping you guys purchase your first car. Now if you recall, my last video was telling you guys about how to purchase cars from different dealerships, but that is of course not the only place where you can purchase them from. You can also purchase it from private owners. Now, you have to be very careful when purchasing cars from private owners. Granted, if you know the car will inside and out because your neighbors or something, or you know the person took really good care of their car, then you're probably well educated enough in that very specific car to know whether or not you wish to purchase it. But when purchasing cars from people you don't know at all, which often happens, again, you need to be very careful. Granted, you can get some really nice cars for some really good deals using this method, but concerns are raised. The first of which, of course, is safety. You want to do the research you can, make sure you fact check yourself on your research to take safety precautions to make sure that you stay safe. And if you know any cops, it's probably not a bad idea, if they're willing to, to give you advice on how to stay safe in these kind of situations. Three pieces of advice that I have for you guys is A, make sure you take a few people with you when you go meet the person. B, see if you can get them to schedule in a very public area that's very well populated at whatever time you're going to meet them. And C, make sure that it is scheduled during the day. Now, after you purchase a car, you also want to make sure you get the warranty because there's a good chance that the person's not going to offer you warranty. And for the same reasons I listed in the previous video, you want to make sure you have it in case anything happens. Next, when you're actually purchasing the car, you actually want to look at, before you do so, you want to ask them for the records of the car. See how frequently it's been oil changed from these records. Now, if they don't produce these records, it doesn't necessarily mean that the car hasn't been maintained. A lot of people do things like oil changes themselves because it's not very complicated, it's a slight annoyance, but it does save you a lot of money. In fact, I recommend that if you have somebody who can teach you how to properly change the oil, then you can you should probably learn how to do it yourself because again, it will save you a fair amount of money. But if they are one of those people who end up going somewhere else to get their oil changed by somebody else, then they should be able to get their records produced and you can see how often it's been changed and if it's been properly maintained. Next, you want to go to auto check. Auto check, if you're listening, please don't see me. I'm just trying to tell everybody how awesome you guys are. But if you want to do collaboration, I'm here. Anyways, back to this. Auto check is a place where you can type in the number of any given car to make sure that hasn't been any serious accidents or not. This way, you're not going to drive off and not know that it's been in a major car collision that could have caused major damage to the engine or the car in general. Next. After you've picked out a car and you know that you're really interested in a car, but before you actually purchased it, no matter whether it's being bought from a private owner or from a dealer, you want to make sure you spring for the inspection from a mechanic that is reputable. It is very, 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 very important you do this. Granted, it is a little expensive. It is $100, generally speaking, depending on where you purchased it from. But trust me, it, the, the $100 now can save you thousands of dollars later. Something could be wrong with the car that won't even reveal itself during the test drive, but it could break down a month from the day you bought it, a week from the day you bought it, sometimes even the next day from the day you bought it. So again, it can save you thousands of dollars. And even if there's nothing wrong with the car, then it will still just give you closure that's not going to break down five miles after you drive it off the parking lot. The next piece of advice was actually given to me by a dealer. Now, Grant, don't don't freak out. Don't freak out. I know you're probably thinking that this is a bad, bad advice because it came from... A dealer but just hear me out it makes a lot of sense first thing you want to do is after you've gone through the inspections and you're actually going to apply for the loan if you're applying for the loan see how good of a deal they're going to give you try to get them to give you the best deal possible now after you do that then you can go to the bank and then see what kind of loan that they're going to see what kind of loan they can give you if it's not as good as the loan that the car dealership gave you then you can tell them the car dealership gave you a better loan than what they're offering in which case the bank might be able to give you an even better option. Or if they're not, then you know that you can go back to the car dealer and they can give you the better offer. Now, when you're actually applying for loans, you have to consider three things. How long you've lived somewhere, how much you can put in down payment, and how long you've had your job. Generally speaking, it's like six months to a year where you've had to live somewhere and six months to a year to how long you've had to have your job. And you have to be able to put a very significant amount onto your down payment depending on how expensive the car is that you're buying. If so long as you have these three things, the bank should be able to give you a loan. Now granted, if you're a youth and you're buying your first car and you haven't, if you've only had your job and live somewhere for a minimum of six to a year or anything similar to that, then it's probably going to have a high interest rate, but it's going to be a loan nonetheless. 
Now, if you don't have these three things, you should still be able to get a loan. The thing is that you're going to need a co-signer, which for a lot of us is going to end up being our parents. I know you're trying, you, you may be one of those people that are trying to become more independent of your parents, but look, it is the process. If they're willing to help, you should kindly accept the offer and have them co-sign for the car. Next is the some insurance advice. After you purchase a car, you already have the loan and you're paying for insurance. It's called the good student loan. What you want to do is call your insurance and ask them if you comply for the good student loan. And what this is, is if you're a good student and you have good grades, they'll actually deduct the amount that you're paying to your insurance company. Most companies have this, not all of them. It is just worth asking, call them up, say, hey, I want to apply for the good student loan. They may ask you to send in records of how good your grades are. For most people, you have to maintain a B average to be able to apply for the good student loan. So long as you can apply, you, you can maintain that grade level, then you'll be able to save some money on your insurance. Now, to conclude the video, I'm going to give you some recommendations for some cars I researched that I think are really good for beginners, or not beginners, but people who are buying their first car. Granted, you shouldn't limit yourself to this list, and you should definitely explore to see which kind of car will best suit you and which kind of price tag will best suit you. But these are some cars that I definitely would recommend. The first is the Dodge Dakota. The 2005 version runs, according to Keller Books, from $6,000 to $7,000. Fairly reasonable, and so long as you get one that's been well maintained, it is a really good car. It's got four-wheel drive, so if you ever need, in a situation where you need four-wheel drive, it's there. It's got the, the, the pickup feature, which will allow you to, of course, it's got tow haul mode, which will allow you to, well, as self-explanatory, do tow and hauling. It's a pickup truck, so if you ever need to haul anything rather significant, granted, it is, it is one of the smaller pickup trucks, and it's a little bit more streamlined, but it, any significant amount, you can easily go ahead and take it. It's granted the fuel economy is not the best, but it's also not the worst either. And if you know how to properly drive cars, then you can get your fuel economy way better than what the average is, no matter what kind of car you're driving. One thing that is worth noting is that these guys did have a recall on the original airbags that they have. So when you go to the dealer and if you're considering purchasing this car, just see if the airbag's been replaced with a working one. And if not, the dealer should be able to replace it for you. And if they can't, well, I wouldn't recommend getting it in that case. But so long as the airbag's good and the rest of it's good, then you're probably good purchasing this car. And in fact, that goes for any car. Make sure that whatever car you're getting hasn't had a part on it that's been recalled. Or if it has, make sure that part has been replaced so that the car is in proper working order. In this case, it's the airbags. Uh, as far as I know, none of the other cars have had these recalls, but I want you to definitely double check on any car to include the ones I'm about to list off. Next is the Kia Soul. Now, with the really early models, they, it did have a slight acceleration problem, but that has have, that has been fixed in the newer models. And when I say acceleration problem, I'm not talking like it's not going to accelerate at all. It's just enough that it's, as far as I can interpret from the reviews I've seen, it's enough to annoy the people who are driving it. So that's definitely something you want to consider when you're purchasing a Kia Soul. But like I said, in the newer models, they have pretty much rectified this problem. Now, the newer models go for about 15000 so the older models will go for a very significant amount less. But even 15000 I I kept all the cars on the list here at 15000 or under. Next is the Honda Civic. It is important to know that this one doesn't have four-wheel drive. It only has front-wheel drive, but it does have front-wheel drive. So like I said in my first video, it does have the extra traction on the front wheels if you need it. It is highly recommended for new people. I constantly see it with, with people who are buying their first car and have done research on it. Again, down in the description below. It's really recommended. It gets great fuel economy. So that's another one that you can go ahead and look into if you wish to purchase your first car. Well, guys, that is it for this video. If you have any other advice that you can give for people who are purchasing their first car, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. Otherwise, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you send this video to people who are actually purchasing their first car so that they can avoid so much confusion and hassle and hopefully avoid getting a bad decision on a car. 
Otherwise, make sure to hit that bell button to catch my video in the next two weeks. Until then, hear nothing and listen to all. Bye guys.